Gears of War the board game is a cooperative adventure game that's based on the video game of the same name. It's designed by Cory Konieczka, who's known for his very popular adaptation of Battlestar Galactica. In Gears of War, players are soldiers for the Coalition of Ordered Governments, or COG, as they fight against the horde of alien locusts. It's a scenario-based game. One to four players can play, and it lasts one to three hours. Players begin Gears of War by deciding which COG character they want to play as, and then collecting their miniature, weapons, ammunition, and grenades. Then everyone's going to decide together which of the game's seven missions they want to play, and build a small deck out of the mission cards. Each card represents one stage of the mission, which players are going to complete in turn. The card itself also tells you setup information for that stage, any special rules, as well as the objective for completing it. Now if at any point during the game all of the cogs are down and bleeding out, the mission is going to end immediately in failure. So the three locust enemies that the team is going to face, along with the mission cards, the location cards, the cog order deck, the locust AI deck, and the random weapons deck are all placed by the mission reference card in the center of the table. And then the players use the stage one location cards to build their first board with the tiles. And then they place the cog miniatures and all the starting locust miniatures on those tiles. Finally, each player is going to draw a hand of six order cards, and then it's the first player's turn. Now, a turn in Gears of War contains three steps. The heal step, the cog order step, and the locust activation step. In order to heal, the active player can draw up to two order cards as long as they don't exceed their hand limit. During the cog order step, a player can discard one order card to move two location spaces, to make one attack, or to resolve the action text that's on that card. Now, this action text can be anything from getting an extra attack to moving and attacking, to helping out your fellow cogs or coaxing an enemy out of cover. Of course, this is Gears of War, which means that pretty much every turn is going to involve at least one attack. Now, a player can attack any enemy within their line of sight, and the attack itself is resolved very simply. The attacker rolls the black attack dice, the defender rolls the red defense dice, and the results are compared. Any wound on the attack dice that's not matched by a shield symbol is going to immediately affect the defender, while any omen that's rolled is going to trigger the weapon's special ability. Now, the amount of attack dice you have available depends on the weapon used, and you can get extra dice by making a special overkill attack, although that uses up precious ammo. The amount of defense dice depends on the defender's defense score, their distance from the attacker, as well as whether or not they're using cover. So COGS lose one card from their hand with every wound that they take. They're considered down and out if they don't have any cards left in their hand and they are wounded. A COG that is down can't take any actions, but they can move one location square in their turn. Their turn will still trigger a Locust activation phase. A Locust can only be wounded once. This decreases their hit points. If that Locust takes as many wounds in one attack as they have hit points, then they die and they tend to drop equipment. A player can also discard a card to perform a special action on their turn or to trigger a reaction ability on somebody else's turn. Special actions include things like reviving a downed cog or picking up dropped equipment. Reaction abilities let players follow a cog that's moving, guard against advancing locusts with an extra attack, or dodge in order to get extra defense dice. During the locust activation phase, the player takes the top card off the locust AI deck and resolves the text. These cards tend to affect the locusts in groups, and usually they're grouped by type. Often the actions that are on those cards will need to fit special conditions, such as how close the locusts are to their target. Once the locusts' actions have been resolved, then it's the next player's turn, assuming there's anybody left standing. If at any point during that turn, the groups resolve the objective for that mission stage, then the mission card is turned over and you resolve the setup directions for the next stage, or declare victory if it was the last stage of the mission. So a great thing about this game is that it really recreates the feel and the atmosphere of the video game very, very well. So if you're a fan of the video game, you're probably going to be pretty pleased with how they adapted it. Another really great thing about this game is the urgency in it. You have to use those cog order cards for two things, wounds and for the actions on them, which it, it, it gives the game a real sense of urgency, a real sense of threat. It, it tends to be very touch and go a lot of the time. Okay, so a con for this game, though, is the replayability may suffer a bit. There's only seven scenarios here to choose from. Uh, once you play one, you know what's going to happen. So if you try and play the same scenario again, it might not be quite as fun. Another negative is uh, the design, the color. 
They've reproduced the grays and the browns and the muddy reds of the video game very, very well. Unfortunately, that means that sometimes things are a little bit hard to see, and potentially those color choices in that design could have been done a bit better for the board game. Another potential drawback of the game is that it really is a tactical reaction game. You're trying to make the best of a bad situation. You can't make big overarching plans and execute them elegantly, which some people may really want to do. On the other hand, that does remove the potential for one person to plot a plan and force everybody else to go into it, because sometimes you don't have the cards to do whatever they told you to, so there's more room for independence. Another really great thing about this game is that when you don't know what the missions are, there's a lot of tension to them. You know what your objective is, but you don't know what's going to happen next, and the game can often turn on a dime. This also makes it really hard to win. This game is challenging, and it really, really rewards good cooperation and supporting each other, as well as good gameplay, so by the time you finally finish a mission, you're going to feel super accomplished. <laughs>